Time now to welcome in Giants head coach Joe Judge. Coach, congratulations on your third victory in a row. Obviously, you, you got off to a great start offensively. Let's go to the very first drive of the game. You got an explosive play from Evan Ingram. Yeah, so the key was starting fast in this game. We talked to our team about that, wanted to go out there, coming off the bye week. We didn't want to dip our toe in the water. This is important for us to come out as a team and really start fast in all three phases of the ball. So flipping the offense right here, we got a third and two situation, really starts the game out right here. That's when they're going to be a little bit more aggressive to defend the sticks right here across the way, and they're going to be a little bit tighter in our face. So it always starts with protection. We get a good example right here. We're going to start before we even talk about the route of just the protection with it right there. So you see Wayne coming back in. You see matching man for man right there. So you know it's a man defensive call with the linebacker walked out and then shifting back in. All right, with Wayne shift. Now, Daniel's going to check and put Wayne up in a position to help on the interior line right here. And what that's going to clear up is giving us more of a firm, flat pocket in front. And then Andrew and Cameron's going to run the edge players on by. But we're going to see a great shot right here from the side before we even worry about the pass part of it, of just the room Daniel gets in the pocket on this play right here. And it's really a nice shot right here. I'm talking about giving him room to step up and step into the throw. And you see right there just that firm, flat pocket. You got Wayne over here working with Zeitler. All right, you got Shane, you got Gates right there working together. And then you got Andrew and you got Cam both protecting inside out and making the pass rushers run right on by so Daniel can step up in the pocket right there and gives him just the opportunity to go ahead and make a good aggressive throw on by. And as he's throwing it right there, it looks like pregame warm-ups. No one really around him right there can throw a real accurate, aggressive ball right there. But again, no one there in a more of a press mode. And Cincinnati's a team that plays a lot of press defense. They want to get up in your face, really delay the receiver getting down the field so that the rush can get home right there and affect your quarterback. Daniel's just going to be real simple. And again, it's really about players, not plays. He looks out here and sees Evan in a matchup one-on-one -on -one in a safety. And he's going to look out there and just know that's a good matchup on a go route right there for Evan. He's going to give him a ball down the sideline and take advantage of it. So again, Evan does a real nice job with just a stutter release on the line of scrimmage. He makes the defender really widen his base, frees his feet, and he oversells, taking away the inside on the shake. Then Evan does a nice job right here just clearing outside gets vertical, and then we want to make sure we don't drift going down the field and give the defender a path to get to your near low hip. We want to go ahead and beat him and then get vertical and stack him so now he's in a chase trail position working down the field. It's a good job right there, Evan running through the ball. All right, Daniel puts the ball up over his shoulder right there. Good high point catch. And again, the point we want to make with our receivers is don't run with your hands extended. Put your hands up and then run through the catch right there. You see Evan pumping his arms, puts his hands up at the last second, runs on through. And then it's now it's just between him, all right, and the safety to finish on through the plays, doing a nice job there, trying to work the stiff arm, shed some contact, buys a little bit more space, and then doesn't run out of bounds, you know, finishes as much down the field as he can right there to get to the goal line. It's really a nice play right there. And again, we'll go to the back end here and tie back in the protection of it. And again, we bring Wayne back in the backfield right here. That gives us some information right here with the man coverage, the linebacker on the back. And then we get a chance right here to see just the games are trying to work inside. So again, you see they've got the four down linemen right here. They got the two backers really mugged up in the A-gaps. And you know, at that point right there, no one's really going ahead and rushing everyone just like this. Not that it couldn't happen, not that it doesn't happen, but normally you have to expect some kind of movement out of this. And now it comes down to the players really working together inside out. And one of the tougher combinations to work is when you've got the running back on the second level working with the offensive line on the front level right there. So Wayne's going to move on up. That's going to be his initial assignment. Zeitler's going to be right here on the defensive tackle. And it's really a nice job of the two of them working together. And Wayne's going to step forward aggressively and work against the linebacker who's going to try to be picking Zeitler's hip and then coming vertical and allowing the defensive tackle to come back around right there. And what you're trying to protect in these right here is you're trying to always protect the back hip of the lineman you're working with to make sure that it gets across his face and doesn't create a two-on-one matchup with the lineman getting picked off and then the running back having two guys he'd have to account for right there. Wayne does a nice job right there. He comes forward aggressively. He thumps him, keeps him in front of Kevin right there. Kevin passes off and exchanges it, and then Wayne's going to come back here late and get a body and some kind of contact on the tackle coming across. But by that point right there, we got a lot of room to throw right there. Daniel steps up and makes the pass, and Wayne right there sitting on that chip against that game with the backer and defensive tackle really does a nice job. And again, coverage-wise, you can see how tight they're covering inside. It's a press defense. They've got the middle hole helper. So between what's going on here, because this guy's going to cut Shep coming across, you got the middle field safety is going to play over the bunch side right there, and you got the tight coverage one on one. It's really a, the best decision Daniel could make is just take the one on one with Evan versus the safety down the sideline right there, and then obviously 
the result speaks for itself with a big 53-yard gain to start the first drive out right there. Nice play. Set up the first score for us right there as a way to go ahead and start fast and get on the board. Yeah, nice explosive play. Great job by Wayne, the train, Gallman stepping up on that block. And, of course, he would get to punch it in from the one-yard line four plays later. Let's go to the third quarter now. We get a takeaway, Coach, by a guy who was just activated off the practice squad last week, Nico Lelos. Well, you know, you tie in, he just came up last week, and that's kind of the point we want to show this clip on. We talk every all the time about improvement and progress throughout the season. This clip right here really highlights two young guys making a play. These are two guys that made a lot of improvement week by week, and it showed off, you know, last Sunday. So it's second and 12, so this is what we call a get-back-on-track situation. Get back on track to us. Second and long may be a deal where you can go ahead and try to get it all back in one shot and almost call two third down plays and treat it like a second and 12 and a third and 12 with two third down plays. Or it could be a team that takes the mentality, we're going to take two plays to get all this yardage back. That could be a team that runs screens or direct runs, something between the tackles, or maybe a short, quick game pass. So second and 12, 38-yard line. We're going to jump up top. And the two young guys I want to highlight right here. So we got Darnay Holmes right there playing that kind of nickel corner position right there. And then we got Nico Lelos right here on the edge. And we're going to watch these two guys and how they tie together here. And later this is actually going to be working a game off right here. We're going to work the interior penetration and contain. He's going to work to wrap around. And then once he sees the ball leave the hand of the quarterback, he's just going to have good effort and react to the ball. And then right here, Darnay's just going to do a good job right here of just playing with good zone vision on the quarterback, holding his zone, and then making a good aggressive break. So the first thing I want to show right here is we're going to start up front right here talking about from this angle here. And you see Nico right here coming up vertically making the tackle commit. You see the penetration right there from BJ, and then the wraparound right there from Nico coming back around. Now their protection slid his way. And what I mean by that is the center went with the guard and the tackle to form that three-man wall right there. So it takes away a little of the penetration we can get from Nico coming back around, but it leads to his reaction going back to the ball. Now, watching Darnay right here up top, now Nate's going to be in a good position, and we talk a lot of times about just location of the ball. And this is a position right here where he sees it, he sees the quarterback in his windup throwing. He makes an immediate break to the near receiver in the direction of the ball. And you see right here, this ball is going to hit. I'm going to slow mow this down there. That ball is going to hit right up there around the face. And the reason that's significant in tight coverage is the lower it is, the more secure it is. If you're putting that thing on the belt buckle to the thigh, normally only the offense can really get on that ball right there. Once it goes up in that high chin to eye level right there, it's just easy for a defender to break and get his arm extended and make contact on this ball right here. All right, and you see right there, the ball is tipped up. Now, Nico just does a great job, we'll see from the back end, reacting and then laying out and making the catch. And again, you can see other factors that go into it. It's never just one man, but you can see right away, Allen's actually looking down low. We get the safety help over Brad right here. That confuses him a little bit. He then comes through his progression right there to the underneath throw. You see we've got a match pretty well across the board right here. All right, and we do a good job here. Darnay just go ahead and breaking and making the play. And again, you see BJ pressing here, Nico coming around right there. And does a good job right here is as the ball comes out, Darnay making a good aggressive break. You can see right there he can't go ahead and make too much contact. Does a good job of that near arm, punching that ball up. And then Nico just doing a great job. This is actually a drill Pat does with the guys on Fridays, turnover drill. All right, guys laying out in the launch pad out there on the grass. Nico doing a good job really playing on through it and does a really good job of catching the ball, trapping it, getting his elbows closed underneath the ball. So as they replay it, it's a clean turnover right there. You like to see a guy's hard work pay off. Nico's a guy that's made a lot of progress for us throughout the season. He earned his way up, and then he's earned more plays by making this play right here. Well, Coach, it's definitely paying off. A great defensive takeaway right there. Great hustle by Nico Lelos. But the Giants' defense was not done. They've got another takeaway up their sleeve. After a 29-yard punt return, the Bengals are standing at midfield, and defensively, Coach, you guys need a huge play. You need a stop. You've got to keep them out of field goal range. You've got a two-point lead. Take us through what happens defensively. Yeah, first of all, just our defense mentality as a team. And we talk to the guys all the time. There's always sudden change. It could be short field, long field. We don't decide where we go on the field as a defense. We just decide on how we play and how effective we can be to get their offense off the field. So the situation we have right here is obviously it's 57 seconds left in the game. We're in the fourth quarter. Ball's on the 50-yard line, and a field goal beats us. All right, we're up by two points. They get any kind of a conversion now with a field goal or a touchdown. All right, we're going to be in a situation we may have some time left. We've got to see how it manages out. But our mentality now is field goal beats us defensively. We've got to get these guys off the field. But most importantly, with the ball on the 50-yard line, we're really thinking we've got to defend about 15 yards worth of grass 
to keep them out of field goal range. Now, maybe they can kick that thing a little bit further, but our got to reach line right there is the 35, and that makes it a 53-yard field goal. Now, they've got a big leg kicker. All right, so we've got to make sure we make it as long a field goal as possible. We know in a desperation situation, they're not going to go down without swinging. Now, we talked to our defense about pressure on the quarterback. That doesn't always mean a sack. It just means putting pressure on him and making him make a faster decision than he wants to. And that starts up front with the interior and the bigs, and it ties into the back end of how we can play in coverage to match and make sure we eliminate free runners to get completions. So we're going to start up front with just, again, the rush, which ends up getting home right here. So we're going to have Jabal Sheards up top, makes a huge play for us right here. Carter Coughlin's on the other end. And then we got BJ and we got Leo inside that are going to tee off and try to get vertical in the pass rush. All right, and you see right here just getting a good jump on the snap. All right, and you can see, you know, really closing here, Carter pushing the tackle back into where the quarterback is, making him step flush up. And you got Jabal racing around the other edge right there. And we've got good presence inside with Leonard and BJ that as Allen steps up, he's got people in his face that he can't escape, pull that thing down and run. Now, as you look at the back end right here, again, you really see where we're defending. All right, that 35-yard line being a line, all right, these zone drops at this point right here, really making sure that ball's got to go over our guys, but then underneath that second level right there, who's all in position to break on it right there. What we're telling them is, if they throw the ball one of these check downs right here, we want to make the tackle as fast as possible and inbounds to keep that clock running. They don't have timeouts. We want to make sure they hurry in their operation. But we've got to be in a good point here with like Bradbury, okay, Ike up top, all right, Blake and these guys in the middle. That that ball comes out underneath, we've got to be breaking downhill, securing it, and making a tackle. No yards after contact, and we want to keep them inbounds. All right, now, we end up getting the big play. I'm going to go to the back end right here to really kind of talk on through it and dynamics of it, of how it works together. And this is really an excellent play by Jabal. And this guy's experienced. He's got a lot of uh, vet savvy. But really, this just comes down to a lot of the technique and execution he gets on a weekly basis working with Brett and the outside linebacker drills. And we're going to watch right here. So what they're trying to do here is buy time with using the tackle to help the tight end. This is called a chip right here, okay? And as he comes up, you're really looking to go ahead and hit the outside half of Jabal's body so he has to get forced inside for the tackle to really take him over. What you don't want to do is hit the inside and let him bubble around. Now the tackle is further to go and becomes more of a foot race. Now we're going to watch Cincinnati on this part right here. They're going to slide out. There's the outside half of Jabal's body, and as they're looking to get some kind of contact to really stunt him coming off the, the ball, he does a really nice job right here with the swim move. You see he pins the near arm, he swims over the top right there, it clears him, and that puts him in a much more better position to rush right here on the tackle. Now, at this point right here, he's going to do a really good job of playing with good extension and a good hand swipe right here. You see both hands come right there for the outside arm, and once he pins the tackle's outside arm, now he's got his hip, and now it becomes that foot race between him and Allen who can get up there faster. And again, you can see Allen feels the pressure. He can feel those blue jerseys collapsing. And as he's looking to step forward right here, you got Carter falling over and BJ coming to the party right there, which stops him from stepping up, puts him back in there, and then Jabal does a really nice job of recognizing the ball's being held low. Anytime the ball's low, it's not secure. He attacks the near arm, and then right there, that's the punch out we get. Bad ball secured, taking advantage of it. And then here's Leonard right here, seeing it, recognizing ball on the ground. Does a nice job of getting on the ball, getting to that fetal position and protecting it. Two hands on the ball, getting his knees up there to his chin in that fetal position and really doing a nice job. And again, you can see everyone right there, a lot of energy on the team. Eyes in, knowing they just made a big play. Everyone has a hand in it. The front can't get home if the coverage isn't there. The coverage can't have success if the front doesn't put pressure on them. All right, and it's all the fundamentals. It ultimately always comes back to good fundamentals. So all the things we're working in those period one, period two, individual periods, that's really what shows up in the last play of the game for us. Coach, great defensive stop right there. Great road victory. Thank you so much for the time. Of course, we appreciate all of the insight, and good luck against the Seattle Seahawks. Appreciate it, Sean.